Welcome to the Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Rose. Big shout out to all the free spirits and independent thinkers out there. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for the listen. Today, I am your guest. I want to speak to you directly about something that I think is very important, and it is related to being a maverick, and that is to learn how to be in charge of your own energy field. You know, one of the things that mavericks do is they take responsibility for themselves rather than blaming the world or blaming other people for how you feel or what you are projecting. You just take care of it. You understand you are in charge of your own energy field. So let me share with you some techniques for how to cleanse and charge and understand the function of the aura. So first, let me just say that this energy field that you have, which radiates from you, which isn't perceived in the normal five senses that we have, we perceive the aura in our psychic senses or our soul senses. Some people might see the energy if they use their psychic vision. Some people may feel the energy in somebody else's aura if they're using psychic feeling. Some people may be able to describe it in a word or a sentence or a phrase if they're using psychic hearing or psychic audience. And other people may just know if they're using psychic prophecy. All of those senses are in operation and we all have them and we may change it up from day to day, but all of us have a sense that is our primary sense and one that we use most frequently. But more than being able to sense somebody else's aura, first, I want to describe to you why you want to be in charge of your own energy field. And there are a few reasons. Number one, the purpose of your energy field is to act as a filter. It filters out some of the outside bombarding psychic pollution. And if you want your psychic senses to be more accurate and more clear, if you want to have a better connection with your own guides or with the angelic kingdom, then having a cleansed aura is essential because it will filter out the stresses and the psychic pollution of your environment. The bigger the city that you are living in, the more psychic pollution is all around you. You are able to perceive in any one of your four psychic senses, you're able to perceive all the thoughts and feelings or the energy or the attitudes of the people who live in that city. Now, you can probably measure this in your own mind. Compare the difference when you are in nature, in a quiet environment, low population, versus driving into a highly populated area. There's a background chatter that happens in a highly populated area, area, and that is the psychic pollution level I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with it. It just is. It's energy. And the more open you are intuitively, the more you're going to be aware of it on some level. Your aura serves as a filter. And so if you do any kind of intuitive work, if you want to get those warning signals that are so essential in life, or those signals that guide you into an opportunity, or that give you additional information in all of your decisions, then having a cleansed and charged energy field around you helps you to get those accurate signals. It's very, very important. Now, the other thing that happens with your energy field is if you've had a bad day, maybe you've had an extremely pressured day at work. Maybe you've been around people who were radiating anger or sadness or frustration. And if you are a sensitive person, you have a tendency sometimes to absorb it, to take it on. And then it gets stuck in your energy field and it becomes like emotional orbiting debris. And it becomes dirty or messy or clogged up or spiky. Any one of those kinds of descriptions. Well, you want to be able to discharge it and fill it with new energy and set 
the tone that you want in your own energy field. It is important not only so that your psychic senses, your soul senses are stronger and there's more clarity, but also so that your physical health and your stress levels are better. If you don't cleanse your energy, sometimes that orbiting emotional debris just becomes like a pressure cooker. And by the way, if you are under a lot of pressure for a deadline, for example, maybe you're a student in college and you're studying for your finals, or maybe you are a CPA and you're preparing taxes at the end of the tax year and all that pressure is on you, whatever it happens to be, if there's deadline pressure um, and you're doing super focused, concentrated work, what happens is your energy field comes in and gets tighter and tighter and tighter around your physical body. And what is necessary in that case is to take a soul deep breath and expand your energy field out. So that's a form of aura management. Also understanding when that tightness has happened and when you just simply need to relax it and let it go release it. But for some people, um, sometimes what happens if they're rushing all through the city, maybe they're doing 10 errands in one day, maybe they're getting ready for a party and they have to pick up five or six different things. And they're going from place to place to place and rushing back home and trying to get it all ready before the party. Sometimes what happens is in that rushing, you leave little pieces of your energy field wherever you're going. You become scattered or your energy field becomes too big and you become spacey and you don't feel consolidated. So sometimes in those cases, you actually have to bring your energy field in a little bit, consolidate, bring, consolidate it, bring it back into this moment, make it stronger. So see, there's not one and only resolution or one and only reaction your energy field may have. You have to check and ask yourself, how is my energy field? Is it here? Does it feel consolidated and empowered and clear and um, strong boundary? You have to ask these questions and you have to be willing to perceive it through all your senses, not just saying, okay, what does it look like in my mind? Or how does it feel to me? You have to ask yourself and let the answer come in the way that's right for you. Now, for me, because I use psychic vision a lot, I'm a visionary. That's my, that's my primary sense. I might go inside and I might say, how do I imagine my energy looks? If I were to go into my own mind, how does it look in my mind? And I might get an answer that's very valid for me. But if you use feeling a lot, psychic feeling, which is much more physical in the body, you might say, how does it feel? Does it need to go bigger or does it need to come in? Um, do I need to cleanse it? What do I need to do to bring my energy pattern into a more solid and consolidated power place? So you learn to find the answer in your own way, okay? So be aware of the fact that if your aura is clogged up with emotion or stress or pressure from the day, it's feeding your emotions. It's feeding the stress in your body and you can easily discharge it. You can take charge, you can flush it. So let's talk about some ways that you can do this. There are several. Number one is to become aware that you do have an energy field and to care enough about it to change it. That's number one, first and foremost. Number two, an easy way to cleanse your aura is maybe you imagine or you sense or you feel or you understand that your energy field is like a balloon and nearly everybody has experienced blowing a balloon up, whether it is with a helium machine and you watch that balloon inflate. If you go to a place and have balloons inflated in order to bring them home for a party, 
Or maybe you've just taken it and you've used your own breath and you've blown that balloon up and you've expanded it. But what I want to bring your attention to is imagining and sensing and feeling what it's like to have that balloon in blowing up and expanding in all directions at once. And imagine your energy field doing the same thing. So a quick and easy way to cleanse your aura is to just take a moment. And maybe you go into your heart. Maybe you just go inside your own body and you take a deep breath in. And as you expand out with your breath, you imagine your energy field also expanding front, back, above, below, side to side, all at once in all directions. And you push whatever kind of collected pressure or emotional debris, you're pushing it out with your aura gently, beautifully, and it's incredibly refreshing. But there's something more I would suggest. And this is, again, dependent on which psychic sense is your strongest. For people who are very high in psychic feeling, and you would be the ones who feel everything physically, you would be the ones who get the chill, you would be the ones who would feel physically uncomfortable when you're around people who are pressured or stressed. See, I would be visually uncomfortable, but if you were a feeler, you might be physically uncomfortable. It, it might affect your body. So for people who use feeling as one of their top gifts, you have to understand that generally speaking, your aura is going to be puffier and more evanescent and bigger than most other people using different psychic senses. So for people who are high in feeling, I usually recommend bringing the aura in a bit and consolidating it because it can become too puffy, not strong enough. Okay. Now you have to sense that for yourself because if you are high in what I call psychic audience, meaning that you convert information into words or language. So people who are high in audience convert all the psychic information into words. They think it, they understand it. It comes to them in language form. Well, people who are high in psychic audience as their first gift tend to have the strongest energy fields. Um, it's like their energy field can be like um, a rhinoceros hide energy field. And their energy can be so strong and have such natural authority that sometimes they need to actually puff it out a little bit. It can become too tight. Okay. So people who are high in audience are going to be the ones who um, can do command voice really well. If you've ever been around somebody who can shift into command voice and you just snap to attention because there's so much power radiating from them, sometimes it can be a bit intimidating. Those are usually people who are very high in psychic audience. As a matter of fact, back when I used to do lectures, and I used to teach about the aura, and I would teach people to be able to perceive the aura. So I'd have a big lecture going on, and I would, I would scan the audience, and I would be able to use my psychic vision to see who had a very strong aura, and usually that means that, that they are an audience type. I would bring them up on stage, and I would have everybody try to sense their energy field because they're the easiest to sense, because they're the strongest. They have the strongest boundary to them, and they're the least likely to be affected by what other people are projecting. So sometimes the people high in audience actually need to relax their aura a bit because it's so strong and concentrated. It's quite opposite for the people high in feeling who have this big, puffy, puffy, evanescent, gentle aura who may need to bring it in a little bit more and make that boundary, the edge of it stronger. Because again, I'll go back to what I said in the beginning, your aura as one of the purposes it serves, it acts as a filter. It filters out 
uh, the psychic pollution or, or the stress that's going on. Okay. So for people high in feeling who feel everything physically in their body, the empaths, they need a stronger boundary at the edge of their aura. So bringing it in and then creating that boundary. Now I talked about taking that deep breath and then exhaling and letting your aura kind of cleanse as you use your breath to fill your energy field like a balloon expanding. And that may sound contrary to what I just said about the feelers when I said, well, maybe they need to bring theirs in. But first you cleanse it. And then you manage the size of your aura. So if you're very high in feeling, then you might want to say, okay, now that I've cleansed it, now that I've flushed it, now let's bring it in and form strong boundaries. Okay. Cause you do want to seal your aura up. You want a strong boundary and different boundary strengths for your aura depends on the situation. If you're at home and you're just chilling out, enjoying your home, enjoying some good music, maybe having a glass of wine um, and it's stress-free, you don't need super strong boundary strength in your energy field. But if you are in the middle of a hospital visiting a friend who just had surgery, maybe you want that stronger energy field so you don't pick up on all the other patients in the hospital. Or maybe you're driving through a very busy or frenetic city. Maybe you want that stronger boundary at the edge of your energy field so that you're not feeling everything. Okay. If you're high in psychic audience, you already have a very strong energy field. And more than anything else, cleanse what you may have collected as far as that emotional orbiting debris, and then maybe soften the edges a bit. If you're a visual type, you're kind of in between the strength of the psychic audience person and the sensitivity of the feeler. Okay, so more than anything, the people who are high in vision tend to have kind of a crisp energy field. You sense a crispness about it, but there can also be some sensitivity. So you're kind of in between. You want to pay attention and see what's right for you. And you also want to trust the answer you get. Okay. That's part of being a maverick though. And then there are the people who use prophecy as their top gift and psychic prophecy is the absolute quick knowingness that pops in with prophecy. There's nothing to back it up. You just know, and you don't know why, you know, and it's super fast and it may be linked to one of the other senses. So for me as a visionary type, I use vision and prophecy all the time. I will look at a person and I'll know, or I'll imagine something in my mind and I will know. I don't always see, but I activate it through vision and then the knowingness comes in. For feelers, they may touch somebody and know, or be around somebody's energy field and then just know super fast. And the same with audience. If it's audience and prophecy working together, you might hear a person's voice and then instantly know what they're not saying or what's under the voice. Okay. So that's the same with the energy field, though. You want to pay attention to the method you need to use in the moment to cleanse it. You need to pay attention to what kind of boundary you think you need to put on. Certainly, um, for me as a visual type, I use a lot of color. So I might fill my energy field with a particular color and I would imagine it. I would bring the color to mind and then I would imagine my energy field filling with that color. And of course, what's really happening is there are frequencies that go with each color. So if you are high in feeling, you may not want to see the color, but you might want to feel what that energy of the color is like and put that energy in your, your aura. So for example, back when I did martial arts, if I had to step into the sparring ring 
and do full contact sparring, which was really scary, I might put orange or red in my aura because it's very fierce or at least bright, bright, shiny golden energy because golden energy is very much connected with confidence. Red and orange energy can be assertive. It can be very physical. Um, But if I'm at home and I'm just chilling out with my family, I don't want a red or an orange frequency in my aura unless we're exercising together or doing something physical or competitive. You might try greens or purples or blues. And again, you can either imagine it or you can feel it, or you can just know it's happening, or you can just say the words to yourself, but you can fill your energy field with a color. And you might say, well, gosh, please tell me what each color means. And I would say, well, if you're a maverick, why don't you try to sense it yourself and use your own logic? Of course, you know, I can say generally, just think on the spectrum. When you get to the purples or the violets, you know, that's a much finer frequency. It's a little bit spacey too. Um, It's very creative and it's highly sensitized. So if you're at home and you get a meditation day and you want to talk to your guides or intuitively sense something, then purples, violets are beautiful to have in your energy field. Um, Blues are also in that range, sensitive, creative, Um, peaceful, okay, maybe a little bit spacey. So again, if I'm on a driving trip, and I'm driving across country by myself, I don't necessarily want to fill my aura with purples and blues, I want to have crisp attention, so that I am clear, and I am present, and so that I can drive well, which might then be yellow, or golden, or white, okay, By the way, if you put a bright, sunshiny yellow in your aura, you may notice your mental acuity goes up, your focus. You know, if you have to take a test, filling your energy field with yellow might be a really great thing. And of course, you can't go wrong with white, you know, crystal, just beautiful, vibrant, white energy, white light, you know, that works in all situations. Golden leans more to the confidence that I mentioned and authority. So if you have to present or lecture, golden energy is just fabulous. And then greens, I didn't mention green. I'm sure you're asking that right now. Greens can be very balancing, beautiful, beautiful feeling for green. But what I suggest to you is rather than you taking notes and writing down what I'm saying, try it. Ask yourself, what is right for you? I used to do a lot of meditation classes and I would do color baths. I would lead a technique where I say, let's do a color bath tonight and see what you can say about the frequency of this color. Silver is really, really interesting. If you ever try, if you're at home and you cleanse your aura and you fill it up with energy, try silver. It's very different than gold, obviously. When you fill with golden light, you're projecting. It's more extroverted. It is um, more dynamic. Silver is very inward. You know, I mean, I can I can tune into the frequency of silver just by talking about it. And I don't want to talk when I talk about silver because it's so inward. It's peaceful. It's um, very, very still. So if I'm going to give a lecture, I'm not going to fill up with silver because I'm not going to be inclined to talk a whole lot if I do. But if I'm going to do deep, deep, highly sensitive spiritual work where I need to be receptive, or maybe I want to channel, then I might do silver. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? Practice all this, play with it. Know that you have the ability to get your own answers in this. So I described The easiest way to cleanse, which is the deep breath in. And as you exhale, you expand your aura like a balloon. And then you create a boundary at the edge of it. 
And the boundary strength will be dependent on what you're doing for that moment. If it doesn't need to be a strong boundary, does it need to be a porous boundary, a gentle boundary? You know, does it need to be steel? If you're going into a courtroom or mediation or something where people are going to be angry, play around with it. Now, there's another technique I want to bring up, and then I'm going to end for today. And that is you can dynamically use or create a cyclone of energy. This is one of the techniques I learned from the free soul course with my good friend, Pete Sanders, Jr., you can look up freesoul.net and find out more about it. But one of the techniques we did, which was called beginning cleansing, is close your eyes, you take a deep breath, you get relaxed, you find your relaxed place. And then using your imagination, whether it's visual imagination, or you're feeling it, or you're just knowing it's happening, or you're saying the words to yourself so you're hearing these commands in your voice, but you attract to you a cyclone of spiritual energy, whether you imagine it, feel it, sense it, or know it. And you have that cyclone of energy spin faster and faster and faster, realizing that we're talking about spiritual energy coming to you, not physical energy, but spiritual energy that exists in other dimensions. And there's no friction there. So once you form the cyclone and then you start it spinning, you don't have to effort to make it swirl around. Once it starts swirling, it becomes brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and it charges up with cleansing, healing energy. Okay. You can make that cyclone whatever color you like, but generally white light is fabulous for this. So you might want to imagine, sense, know, or understand a brilliant, sparkling white light tornado cyclone of energy that comes and maybe you form it above your head and then you let it cascade down and around your body and it swirls around you and it goes faster and faster, brighter and brighter. And as it's swirling around you, it's actually polishing and releasing any debris any emotions, any pressure that you have collected in your energy field. But I highly recommend you don't stop there. So you cleanse and you polish and you swirl it. It's very dynamic through your own energy field. But then you let that cyclone increase in size so that it fills the entire room where you're sitting and maybe if you're home in your own house, you let it fill the entire house and it swirls and it moves energy in a current through the entire house. And as it's swirling and moving, that cyclone is releasing and refreshing. So it's very similar to if you've had a, let's say a dusty, stale room and you open the windows and you let fresh air through the room, that feeling that you get when fresh air circulates throughout the room, it's very similar to this cyclone of energy swirling through the house, cleansing, refreshing, instantly transmuting and changing. And you can do that with your mind. The thing is, I believe that energy is real. I value it. I know we exist in more than the three dimensions that we are aware. There are multiple dimensions around us. Super strings theory tells us this. And even though I'm not a physicist, even though I, I can't talk that science to you, I experience it all the time. So I know that energy is real. When I create the cyclone of energy and when I swirl it through the house, me, for me, as a visionary, I'm going to be picturing the house becoming brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. If you're a feeler, you might be feeling the dynamic change. If you're an audience, you might be telling yourself, this house is now cleansed. And if you're a prophet, you might just know it. Okay. But then if you're doing it in your house, seal it, create a bubble, put the beautiful bubble of light and seal all that good energy in. By the way, that cyclone of energy, 
if you practice it, it is an incredible thing to do when you're on an airplane. Just an FYI, I'm just going to cover this real quick. If airplanes are have some of the dirtiest energy ever, because you have the stress of the traveler, you have people who um, develop stress just standing in the security line and then getting on the plane and then stashing their luggage and then the whole stress of the trip on and on and on. You can feel it when you get on board an airplane. Everybody's tight. If you are able to sense or perceive or see auras and you get on early and you sit down, then you watch everybody go past you as they're heading towards their seat you're going to see a lot or feel or sense a lot of very tight, closed off, stressed out energy fields, auras. Okay. So one of the best things you can do, one of the most beautiful public services you can offer is when you get on that plane, that's why I like to get on early. I take a moment and I close my eyes and I bring that cyclone of energy and I swirl it around myself and cleanse my own energy field. And then I swirl it through the entire plane and I cleanse the plane. And then I put that bubble of light around the plane and I do a silent blessing. And it makes a difference. People that have been in my classes before when I was teaching this, who were emergency room nurses, and I also had a few emergency doctors, emergency room doctors, they would cleanse the emergency room when they got to their shift. And they said it made a huge difference. Can you imagine how beautiful that is? If everybody would understand energy is real and we can affect it, using our mind, making our decisions, taking the time to do it, the world could be a much better place. We would be able to cleanse and shift and release energy just using our intuition and our mind and our higher senses. And yes, aromatherapy helps. You can always diffuse an oil in your house and cleanse the energy in your house doing it like that. You can play beautiful music. That helps to cleanse. You can take a shower and cleanse your own aura. But you want to be able to do it just with your mind. Anytime, anywhere in whatever way is right for you. All right, so I've given you two ways that are easy. You can do the cyclone, which is a nice close, takes a little bit longer, but it really doesn't take that long. And you can also just do the deep breath, the inhale and the exhale, expanding your aura like the balloon, filling it up with something new, releasing the old and filling it up with the new. You can experiment with color, you can experiment with words, putting certain frequencies in your energy field with, with words, with feelings, with knowingness. But the bottom line is, please do something. Maintain your happy, positive energy field. And when you do this regularly, when it becomes a habit, you find out it really only takes a few moments. Because you'll become so efficient and so good at it, and it will become so automatic. And it's one of the best things you can do for the world and, of course, for yourself. Okay, bye for now. And soon I'll be sharing a few more techniques with you about your psychic senses. Bye.